This video was supposed to be me driving home for Christmas. Driving home to my parents' house where I was born and bred in Somerset. Maybe sleeping the night in my old bedroom, picking them up in this, giving them a special journey back to our place for the festive period after a pretty lonely, isolating year. Alas, the day I got this car delivered, the government changed their rules and all of those plans turned to ash. As a consequence, it's just me. Johnny, and welcome to the ghost of Christmas present. The ghost of Christmas present? Ghost of Christmas past? Hi Johnny, it's John Sims. I had the pleasure of being the project lead for the new ghost. Oh, it's you, John. Okay. So it's just me and the ghost of Christmas present. Rolls-Royce calls this a post-opulent car. In other words, what they're saying, the new ghost is for people who want a Rolls for the recession. A Rolls that doesn't look too extrovert, doesn't look too grand on the outside, but on the inside, absolutely sumptuous and beautiful and loaded with comfort and tech. So given that we're probably going to be going into a recession for the foreseeable future, it's quite apt. Now the last Rolls Ghost from 2009 that was Rolls' best-selling car in 116 years of its history. Up until the Cullinan came out, uh, the Ghost was their bestseller. Entry-level car, bestseller, but it was always based on a very luxurious 7 Series BMW. And you, even, no matter how good it was, you, you just couldn't shake that, I don't think. This, this is completely different. This is completely bespoke, all aluminium architecture and a chassis that's Rolls-Royce's own based upon the Phantom and the Cullen and the other two Rolls-Royce models, albeit more expensive. Yeah, and as I said, up until this year, the Ghost was their best selling Rolls-Royce until the Cullinan came along and people realized that in 2020, perhaps the best car that they should be buying is a heavier, less aerodynamic, less dynamic, more thirsty, and apparently more roomy cars. It's a very wide car, the Ghost, and um, hand pinstriped. So it makes me want to uh, drive it extra carefully down back lanes. It's funny how people treat you in a car like this. They make a lot of assumptions. According to Rolls-Royce, their age demographic of the current range is exactly my age, pretty much, 42 years old. In other words, this car should totally appeal to me. You've got the flag bearer system, which reads the road ahead with the forward facing cameras and kind of preempts the adaptive sus suspension for undulations in the road and potholes and shadows and things like that. There's a 12 volt anti-roll bar, active anti-roll bar in the rear. We're riding on air suspension here. You can't adjust it yourself. Rolls calibrates it the way it wants it to be. And that's fine because they know what they're doing. When you're looking around the car, Johnny, as I know you will do, uh, please take a look up into the front suspension area and you will see there a component of the, what we've termed the planar system. And that is the upper wishbone damper. This I know you'll appreciate, Johnny, because it is a good old-fashioned mechanical engineering solution to a problem. And we wanted to even further enhance and remove noise from the ride of New Ghost. And actually what we ended up doing was adding this mass damper to the upper wishbone, which means that as much energy as possible is absorbed before it can transfer into the body structure and be detected by our clients. Of course, being a Rolls Royce, it's comfortable and it's quiet. It's, it's really quiet. In fact, it's quieter in motion, I think, than it is when it's idling. 
there's some 100 kilos of soundproofing in this car, 100 kilos. The result is an incredibly, I mean, incredibly private library levels of, of silence and, and comfort. It, it's a wonderful experience. I feel like this is the pinnacle of, of internal combustion of piston before we go into EV. EV on a Rolls Royce, there's a thing. So in front, I've got three circles, physical circles in a blacked out binnacle area, but the actual clocks are a digital. And then we've got this, in the middle here, a piece of open pore wood. So it's not heavily lacquered, heavily treated, it's actually quite, quite raw. Uh, which I've seen in previous Jaguars and stuff, and I quite like that. And then you've got this piano black tech section here, and the tech is nice and recessed, level with the rest of the dash. It's not sticking out on a plinth or anything daft, or like a pretend kind of bracket. And the tech, yes, is BMW iDrive, and that's the little wheel down there, but it's, it's well enough disguised nowadays. But the real am amazement on the dashboard comes just over there, on the passenger side where it says ghost and it's backlit with just hundreds, 850 in fact, little stars, LED stars. And that's been achieved in a very special way. Isn't that right, ghost of Christmas presents, John? Overall, from an exterior and interior design, I really think that we've been able to modernize ghost Go on then, John. What are your favourite parts of the car? If you look at the illuminated fascia, if you'll notice it's completely and utterly invisible and the dash just becomes one beautifully smooth piece of piano black veneer. And behind this, there are layers which have all been machined. There's about 90,000 perforations. Six years to develop this thing six years born out of obsession there's so much to take in on the inside there really is the cold metal controls that are heavily chromed here which i love we've retained some very analog controls in new ghost and that was in direct response to feedback from our clients they didn't want touch screens they didn't want digital displays and the weight of the switch gear is wonderful but yet the thing that you touch almost all the time when you're driving feels cheaper than the rest the, these stocks here the, the the transmission shift up here and the indicators here they're just sort of raw black plastic which i find odd given that there's so much chrome and metal and attention to weight and detail here The back of the new Ghost actually is my favourite feature. You've got these C-pillars which slope down really beautifully and I know that a chap called Henry Cloak, who's the designer, the exterior designer of the Ghost, he's probably got a few things to say. The rear of Ghost, it continues this yachting analogy. It's, it's resolved in a, a taper from all sides and this is how we create that, that sense of motion. The focus point is the Rolls-Royce rear lamp. This simple red square ring has become a tenet of modern Rolls-Royce design. But here we've modernized it. It's actually leant forwards a little bit. It's, it's more three-dimensional than ever before. My favorite bit is this crease in the roof around there. But the back of it's actually quite plain and quite simple. Boot space. It's a big boot because it's a big car. 500 liters of space. That's about the same as an Audi A4 Avant. I've just used it for beer and a cap. It's good in there. I'm gonna close it with the remote, which is white leather, the same as the interior on this car, and that's an option, that's a cost option. There's a load of options on this car, a lot. So although this is the baby of the Rolls range, like I said before, it's still over five and a half meters long. It's a little bit wider than the last Ghost, um, and I think it looks a lot better in the metal 
than it does in pictures. It's got very, very, very shallow overhangs actually for a car of this kind of nature. It's got some lovely sharp creases on it. This crease here is my favourite. Um, and actually in this kind of colour, which is called Midnight Sapphire, it's not my favourite colour, but you can tell they're definitely playing down a Rolls Royce, if that's at all possible. It's the kind of Rolls for the recession. It's fairly subtle on the outside with some boat inspired uh, aesthetic, especially going at the back and the sill shape. But where it's all going on is in there. I think you get used to enjoying a car of this caliber worryingly quickly. A bit like flying business class long haul. Once you've done it, you don't want to ever go back. It's funny why people treat you in a car like this. And this is obviously the more, this is the more downplayed, subtle rolls. The, the, the rolls on more of a budget, if that's a thing. And really all the theater is in, in here, not, not, not out there. But I guess people know with Rolls Royces, they know. You've got that backlit, subtly backlit front grille. The lighting really around the whole car, the, the atmosphere created by light, lighting is wonderful. I didn't think I'd, I didn't think it would appeal to me. And actually I didn't think it would be as good a driver's car as it is. I actually think dynamically it's... Dynamically, Johnny, when you're driving the car, what I really hope you can appreciate and enjoy is the way that we've integrated the rear wheel steering and all wheel drive into New Ghost. Yeah. Yeah, John. Yes, Ghost of Christmas Present, absolutely. This is when it gets interesting though, when you can glide along in this sort of magic carpet style, but when you want to, you can do this. And you can go 0 to 62 in 4.8 seconds. Which isn't the shocking bit. The shocking bit is when you start to go into corners and you can really go into corners and you don't have that massive body roll that I've got used to over the years with rollers. Um, it, it's a roller without roll, actually. You've got the ride quality, which is just impeccable, but you've actually got communicative steering and a suspension setup which is not just really comfortable, it actually hangs on into corners. For the first time in, in, in Ghost history, it's all-wheel drive, but it's also all-wheel steering. Those back wheels, the back axle does turn uh, a little bit for manoeuvring in cities and towns, but also when you're out really trying to hold on to corners hard. And it works. Hustle. So it's two and a half tons, the new Ghost, despite it being all aluminium, because it's just full of tech and safety. And it's now four wheel drive and, and four wheel steering. So yeah, you know, there's, there's more weight to the transmission and the, the running gear. And that 6.75 V12 twin turbo up there, that's got to weigh a fair bit. But I have to say, it's the, it's the way in which it kind of drives it's an interesting car for a driver cars like this have to be special they have to feel special otherwise their point in the world is non-existent and this car makes me feel very special it's a really beautiful cocoon in here and people coo when they open the doors they gasp, they're impressed. That's the point of it. The Rolls Ghost um, has the spirit of ecstasy lady mascot like they all do, but it also has this vandal proof mechanism so it can retract or go back up manually. Uh, there's a menu on the, uh, on the driving uh, menu actually. But also, if somebody's going to vandalise it, it will just disappear, apparently. That happened. Where's it gone? That's quick. That's really quick. Let's have a look at the engine. 
Ah, oh, that's where the spirit of ecstasy has gone. And that's where she was, in there. So there you have it, 6.75 litre V12 twin turbo, 571 PS, but more interestingly, 627 pounds feet of torque delivered at 1600 RPM. That's like, that's high idle for most engines. It's sensational, what a thing. And of course, it's also all wheel drive and it's also all wheel steering, which is why I can get it into quite tight spaces with relative ease. And that's the other thing I've found, Driving such a big car is actually really easy. I find it quite easy to position on the road, despite the fact that it's huge. And this is the standard wheelbase. That's a big engine. I also suspect this is the last time we see an engine like this in a car like this. This is probably the pinnacle of internal combustion. I might be wrong, don't quote me, but that's what I believe. It's pretty. I, I just hope she comes back. It's a hell of a mechanism from the uh, spirit lady. Spirit lady, I sound like Derek Okora. Is it going to come back? So although I think this is probably the first Rolls Royce I could call a driver's car, Back here is really where it's ultra, ultra special, as is the way with all, all Rolls Royces, because a lot of people buy them and never really drive them. The amazing thing I like is the contrast between kind of relative simplicity, but just a massive amount of luxury, and you've got the tech that's hidden if you don't want to look at it. Press this button, for example, you've got your lovely leather embossed and wood top table that comes down, and press it again, Oh, actually, I've pressed the wrong button. It's on the other side. Let me do that again. <laughs> this button for the table, this button for the tech screen. And you've got a touch screen here and you've got all of the options and the iDrive. It, it's based on BMW's iDrive, but it's well disguised. That's the same, it's mirrored as the front and you've got your little wheel in here inside this little and that wheel is exactly the same as the one I've had while I've been driving it. Albeit with a Rolls-Royce motif on the top rather than a BMW one. But it's fine. It's a really, really good system. But you know what? Get, if you don't want it, get rid of it. Get rid of that. And you know what? When I got in, of course, it's suicide rear door, which is really, really um, good for, for effortless egress, they call it, I think. Egress. Brilliant. I noticed the VIN down there. Big, big Rolls-Royce proud plaque. And this particular car's got the illuminating, yeah, the backlit sills, which is not special on most cars now, but there's a depth to all of the polished chrome on this car. You can tell even the runners for the seats down there and the heater outlet with my feet are on this kind of mile deep wool over rugs, which is a Rolls-Royce hallmark. It just feels that little bit extra special. I've got my massage seat on, you wouldn't know that though, would you? And in the back here, I've got my little fridge. Yeah, with the champagne flutes. They're pre-chilled. Unfortunately, I can't drink because I'm the driver. The other thing about it is I said it before, Rolls-Royce have got their own audio system, so they haven't teamed up with a, with a Bose or a Bowers and Wilkins or anybody like that. This is Rolls's bespoke audio system, and it even uses parts of the car um, to accentuate the sound, like the inside of the sills are part of the subwoofer system. How bizarre. And when they were designing the interior of the car, they were worried about making it too quiet, which was making people feel nauseous. So they've actually had to level out the sound. They've done some crazy damping with the seats and they've done some balance ports with the boot space with the cabin so there's no reverberation. John will tell you these details, won't you John? We found that removing all noise can actually be quite disorientating and uncomfortable. We've invested a great deal of time and an obsessive level of attention to detail in creating one uniform tone inside the cabin. The seat frames, for example, resonated with a different frequency 
to the body. So we introduced damping units within the seats to bring them together into one single note. Uh, and you know what? I still aren't bored of it. Remember the first time I saw it on the Phantom, the Starlight Headliner, and it's even better, I think, in the Ghost. I can turn it off and turn it on if I want to with this button up here. It's all these hundreds of LEDs. I think there's over 800 of them stitched, hand stitched into the perforated leather headliner. And this particular car has random shooting stars, apparently. I haven't even seen one. My kids have been sat in it for ages on the drive looking for the shooting stars. They've not found one. And I've had this car now for a week over the Christmas period. I haven't tired of the headlining at all. I still think it's sensational. Again, it's it's part of the theatre. If Rolls-Royce doesn't have theatre to it, it's kind of irrelevant. Oh, I forgot. I brought a book with me. Not the kind of book I would normally read in a Rolls-Royce. But uh, this is in my downstairs toilet. But it's got a section on the speed nymph. Pretty sure that was an 80s Michael Jackson song. Is that right? Was it? Is that a Michael Jackson song? No speed demon. Anyway, um, often mistakenly thought as, a, as being in some way related to the Rolls-Royce's peerless Spirit of Ecstasy mascot that was modelled in 1910 by Eleanor Thornton and sculpted by the renowned Edwardian artist Charles Sykes. Bear in mind that that Spirit of Ecstasy still is cast and each one is ever so slightly different and imperfect. The Speed Nymph mascot was widely available and was not so mark, mark specific. Back in the olden days of motoring, loads of cars had strange motifs on the bonnet and mascots. But Rolls has kept it forever. Speed Nymph. Not a Michael Jackson hit from the 80s. As tested, £292,475. And this is the entry level Ghost, but with many options. Crumbs. Wheelbase, 3,295 millimetres. Width, 2,148 mil. Length, 5,546 mil. And remember, this is the normal wheelbase. The most popular ones to order in China, China apparently, which is the biggest market, is the longer wheelbase one, but with the, with the really like played down dowdy wheels, not 21 inch. And quite a plain outside color, but inside, crazy with the luxury and the tech that you can't see. I guess that's post-opulence. Oh, effortless doors. Yeah. It is a piece of work, this. And what Rolls have always said is, it has to look quite simple, but it's actually very complicated beneath. Like that, for example, we all know that the umbrellas live in the door on Rolls Royces now. But even better than that, you can order these colour coded to the car and, and that chamber in there is heated so that when you put it in wet, it'll dry it. One touch. You know, it's a real shame that my mum and dad, AKA Bob and Sue, haven't got a chance to ride in this thing because they'd appreciate the theater, the cosseting, the magic carpet ride that this thing has to offer. Although Christmas is in the past, I've got to say, the ghost of Christmas present, this thing has really got under my skin. I think it's a hell of a piece of work. It's beautiful. And for a Rolls Royce, actually quite subtle. But you know what? As refined as the thing under there is, the 6.75 twin turbo V12, actually, I'm most excited about what's to come because although it hasn't been made official, I know that there is going to be an electric Rolls Royce and what brand could be more perfectly suited for EV than these guys, Rolls. They've been trying for over a hundred years to make the engine silent and to deliver a huge amount of effortless power 
So I cannot wait for what is around the corner, for one of these to become electric. Thank you so much for watching The Late Break Show. I've been Johnny Smith. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd love you to subscribe. If you're a Patreon supporter and you subscribe via Patreon, thank you so much. It means a lot. Cheers. Get out on the road and enjoy it.